Um, okay. I'm going to just share I'm, I'm, I'm a little background. My, uh, I'm Chai Yi Wei. I'm a filmmaker myself. Uh, and I also run a post-production lab called Mocha Chai Lab. Um, I am personally very uh, involved and, and uh, like interested in, in the archival of films, old films restoration. Uh, and so I think it was late two years ago, right, that we I had a discussion with Fong Ching, with uh, Eric Ku, and we were like talking, saying that, hey, you know what? If we have a chance, we really need to restore your films, especially especially Me Pop Man or Twelve Stories. Why? Because he is still alive. Um, many films um, we restored one old black and white film. It was an opera, Hokkien opera. Yeah. Um, um, that was two years ago, right? That we last did year. last year. Yeah, and and we we I was involved in the subtitling, translation, and so on, and uh, AFA. Uh, had that print found in Hong Kong. Yeah, Hong Kong it, it was it's very it's historically significant because there w aren't many Hokkien operas recorded on film, mm -hmm. and to have one recorded on film and directed by a Singaporean, it was mm -hmm. extremely important to people like us. So actually, they managed to uh, track one down, and then uh, the condition was pretty bad, wasn't mm -hmm. it? Actually, could you, could you share a little bit about that before I get into my... Sure. Yeah. Um, that, that particular print, uh, because it was a sole surviving print, um, the, the audio in particular was uh, very bad um, because it was overlaid with the film and um, you, can't, you could actually hear bits of it uh, d you know, sort of dropping um, as, as you play the film. Yeah, so that was um, not, not the best print to work yeah, with. And yeah, and on top of that, it had the subtitle lasers etched yeah, onto it. That's right. So you don't have a clean copy, meaning your picture will always have the subtitle there. That's, uh, and it, you can't see it as well because it's deteriorated mm. pretty bad. Yeah. So we have to recreate the subtitles um, and overlay it and create new, new, ver uh, new version of the uh, exhibition format with visible subtitles. It was pretty interesting. Mm. And then um, during our translation, I had to find someone with background re understanding of the language as as well as films and story of back that uh, back then yeah. as well as the historical uh, background on what on that story that was being told in the story so that he could tell what is the right characters to use for each of the names in the characters of that of that opera it, it was there's a lot of research involved in that particular process and so maybe um, okay so what's restoration the act of returning something to its original condition by repairing it or cleaning it. And the act of bringing back something that existed before. So from this definition, we, we understand a little bit about, okay, that uh, we are trying to restore how it was when it was released. And it's tricky because people's memories are fuzzy and prints don't remain the look it is the moment you start playing it. So, um, we are very lucky to have Eric still alive, uh, along with the DOP. That was able, we were able to get them involved in the restoration of the film. Uh, and, and these are the objective, the approach that we went with. Um, and we were saying that we want to restore it to this original look um, and to include participation from uh, the director himself. Uh, DOP, the director of photography, the guy who shot the film, who is now based in Hong Kong, by the way, um, and to uh, try to restore it to how it was in initially exhibited back in 1996, was it? Yeah. So um, this we, we had this discussion before where um, how much should Eric change it if he wants to? And I guess having the DOP actually involved helped in ensuring that, no, that was not how we remembered it. Because Eric, uh, Eric himself uh, doesn't quite remember exactly, I must say, of how bright certain scenes should be and how, how dark certain scenes should be. So uh, we were actually, we, we, we wanted very much the DOP to be involved 
and although he was based in Hong Kong, so the solution was we actually had to ship some of the um, the, the files over uh, to Hong Kong for him to ha have a look. So I'll share a little bit about the technical specs uh, of this project. Uh, the original film was shot on 35 millimeter. Um, and so we went with a 4K scan. And when we scan, we scan the entire uh, the entire uh, film with its sprockets and its uh, entire frame intact. We do not crop anything. And the reason why we do that is so that this will be one copy that we will keep and should we come back to do anything to it, we don't have to refer, we don't have to access the actual print in the vault because print can only get worse or at most frozen or slowed down uh, is decay. You can't, it, it's impossible to stop it from decaying. Uh, so after we scan them, they are all in DPX uh, format, which is a very high uh, quality format. It's like a 16-bit color, w about 12 megabytes, or oh, more than 12 megabytes because this is a 4K, uh, a 4K picture. Per each frame is individually scanned. So it is very high, uh, uh, yeah, it's huge. The file size are huge. And this film is very interesting in the sense that it was shot and exhibited uh, in the intention for it to be in a square aspect ratio. Yeah. So just now, um, Karen has uh, mentioned, you, you saw some of the, uh, there's this flow chart that talked a little bit about uh, what was treated uh, how they treated the film when they uh, received it. So other than the cleaning it, the physical cleaning and inspection of the, of the film, they actually had multiple copies and they had to try to find the best uh, copies from each to put together a brand new version for scan uh, in order to make sure that the scan that we have consists of the best quality possible. Um, and the conforming process does take a while. Um, and the scanning, after it was scanned into DBX, they were all put into hard drives. Uh, we had very a very tight schedule. So it was a very interesting process. Instead of scanning everything, uh, after you scan, you're supposed to run through this process uh, called dust busting and stabilization. It's, it's digitally done. However, part of the process was also done when it was being scanned. So depending on the machine you have, they will do a first pass as it was being scanned, the stabilization as well as the dust busting. And then once it's in digital format, they have to go frame by frame to watch, watch through and individually find those that, that was missed in the first pass. And then eventually they will load them into hard drives and send, send them over to Singapore for us to work on the color uh, restoration. Um, so on our side, we still have to, um, after they are flown over and data ingested, we still have to do double checking because as we get got everything in, put them into the entire film, we still, there are still frames that will be missed and we will have to tell them, okay, which number frame, can you remove this, can you remove that and so on. So it's almost like double, triple check. In, uh, through the entire workflow uh, to make sure that it's as clean as possible before we start work on the color, uh, color, coloring, the grading. And so we did the coloring um, in Resolve. And throughout the whole process, Eric Ku was uh, able to sit in uh, with our colorist to uh, work on that. In fact, the... Uh, a gentleman who was from the Italian lab, uh, Retrovata, actually flew in during the first week as well to make sure that we are doing it correctly. So when you scan, are you guys familiar with the technical? Uh, am I going to do technical things? If, if, okay. Anyway, pictures, when they are scanned, later you will see some pictures. Don't worry, it's not all text I'm showing. Um, it looks very flat. So we have to use that, use a LUT, a lookup table, table to emulate the film stock that is going to be printed onto. Uh, and then from there, we start doing the color uh, adjustments. Um, 
And like I, I mentioned, the DOP is based on uh, based in Hong Kong, so we actually have to take certain footages uh, and load it on the server so that he could download and inspect and say, hey, uh, give comments on on whether we are going in the right direction. Subtitles uh, back then was very poorly done. Um, they only subtitled like uh, the Asian languages. The English dialogues were not subtitled. And so you have incomplete subtitles, which is terrible. And because no one kept any record, uh, Excel probably didn't exist back then. Uh, or probably the format was very different, how they kept subtitles format. So no one really had uh, uh, subtitles in record. So we need to extract, extract it from DVD uh, using uh, people called interns. Uh, <laughs> and, and then um, we have to not just proofread them, we have to re uh, fill in the blanks where there were no subtitles. Because subtitles is important uh, not just for people who don't understand the language. It's important for people who are, let's say, hearing impaired. You would need someone, you, they would, you would need the entire film to be subtitled properly, uh, regardless of language. And you should have one, uh, we had two subtitles eventually, uh, Chinese and English. Why? Uh, I mean, for every single line, whether it's Chinese or English. Uh, I think people these days are a little bit more sensitive to uh, all these. <laughs> and so the subtitles took a while to uh, fix, and eventually we have them converted to 2K and 4K DCPs. Um, this, t today you guys will be watching the 2K version. Um, there is actually a 4K uh, uh, version, but I don't think it has ever been shown. So uh, even back in, uh, I think a few months ago in SGIFF, that screening was not fully completed when, with its grading, and it was only a 2K version, although they had a 4K projection. And they were already, wow, you know, wow, this doesn't, it looks so sharp, you know, when, uh, actually, if it's not that sharp, you no, know, it could, if it's digital, then you know, wow, it's sharp. But um, it's a 35mm print, so it was a 4, we had, restored it to 4K, unlike 12 stories, which was only done in 2K. Why? Because it was a 16 millimeter film. So, okay, I think I'm getting a little boring. So, let's see some pictures, okay? So, when we scan, you see, uh, actually, this is not even the full image. If you see the full thing, it, you see a lot more sprockets and so on. Um, and you can see the audio tracks, you know, at the side and so on. So, this is how it looked when it's scanned, flat. And then this is the final product after we color graded it. Some more. And some more. And some more. Okay, and I will show you guys a little two minute clip that compares how it looked uh, on the previous Tally Cine techniques where they had it converted into a digital beta and then put it onto DVDs. Uh, and then you compare it with the restored version. The video clip is also not as clear as it could be because I could only play back a HD version. Okay, so when you are watching the movie later, it'll be, it'll be even sharper than this. Mm -hmm. 